Narcissists are an elusive breed. They are shapeshifters and the nature of the disorder renders them alien, a subspecies of cunning artificial intelligence. Their ability to mimic human emotions is unsurpassed. Their charm sometimes irresistible. The narcissist is a cardboard cutout, the mere projection of a false self, unable to love, empathize, get intimate, or commit. Loving the narcissist is an, inex an exercise in protracted futility that invariably ends in heartbreak. That was a, a quote from Sam Vaknin's book, Malignant Self-Love, and I believe that it does a great job of explaining why it is that these channels like this are popping up all over and why we, as victims of narcissistic abuse, are compelled to watch them all. <laughs> we want them all. There can't be too much. We want to hear as many different people talking about this and we want to share their experiences and we want to get their advice. We love it when we can see that there's men and women of all races and ages and cultures and languages. We, we love it. It's very validating. And for all of us who have been victims of narcissistic abuse, validation means the world. And the reason for that is because so many of us, we didn't know. We didn't know. And in the amount of time that we didn't know can be decades, decades. People will question you. People that have never been through this kind of thing will question the validity of your claims. They'll be like, you know, how can you be an abuse victim and not know? You know, is it possible to not know? Absolutely, it's possible to not know. It's ironic that people even ask you that question because they don't know either. They're, you know, which is part of why they're questioning it because they're looking at you and they're, you look normal and fine and the person that you're talking about is a friend of theirs or is someone that they would never have suspected. So they didn't know either. Absolutely, it's possible to not know. And the reason for that is because you're indoctrinated. You're indoctrinated from, from the beginning. I do have a question for people that grew up in really, really healthy family situations and they got really sucked into this one experience. Usually, they, the more we get into it, the more they realize that it wasn't the first time, that there was actually some narcissistic abuse going on in their childhood. Either that or the, the exception to that rule is that there was some major loss right before this happened. But the typical pattern is that person won't know they won't know. They'll have some kind of troubled relationship with their family, but they haven't identified it. And on the surface, everything is fine. They think it's normal. They think that everybody has problems with their mom or dad, and this is just how it normally is. And what happens is they get into some relationship, and it's usually been a ratcheting up process where eventually they end up in a relationship so destructive that they can't go on. The world is now unfamiliar to them. Now, all of a sudden, everything is shaken, shaken to the core and they end up in therapy. They end up watching videos. And then the light bulb starts coming on and they start figuring out that there's other people that are telling stories that sound just like their story. You can't get enough of it. You just gobble it up because you have had a lifetime of being denied this reality and you are not used to trusting yourself We're collecting evidence to make our case for ourselves that what we believe what we experienced was really abuse and it isn't just in our heads and that we're not being self-indulgent and all the things that we've been told to deny ourselves the reality of our situation and a lot of the a lot of the time it's for a lifetime I'm really amazed and impressed by the people that are able to identify in their 20s or even teens what's going on that to me is such a hopeful, hopeful thing. I hope that maybe part of the reason they are able to identify what's going on is because we're talking about it here online. The, the young people that were watching YouTube ran across these videos and were like able to figure out, oh, this is what's going on with my mom or my dad or this guy that I've been seeing or channel, you know that I had a near-death experience. Look at this, even the near-death experience. Even I'm dying in front of my husband who is letting me die and he's not jumping up to help me. He lets me drive myself to the hospital. I'm still not cluing in that there's something wrong with him. 33 years old. I look like the picture of health. I'm not a smoker. I'm nothing. And I've had a heart attack. Okay? Heartache has broken my heart. Literally broken my heart. I have a heart surgery. And I have a complication because of the heart surgery. She li literally bleed to death in front of my family. There's six people there that see this happening. My grandparents and my father-in-law are shattered. They're just crying and they're beside themselves. My two parents and my husband, not a tear. Not a tear. And I still don't know that there's something wrong.
during the near-death experience. God himself, <laughs> or, you know, the, the universe, tells me that I am surrounded by people that do not love me and that if I don't go back to be with my children, they will grow up, they will be orphans, and no one will know it because they're surrounded by relatives but no family. I fight my way back. This is what saves my life. I fight my way back to get back to my children because I know that to be true. And the minute that I get back, I'm back in denial about it. And what happens is it proves to be true. Over the course of the next year, my life just gets dismantled by these people. And in a couple of years, there is nothing left. I survived a near-death experience. I survived to come back so that I could have the front row seat to watching the people that I loved the most, that I devoted my life to, that I needed more than now than ever before, watch them dismantle and destroy and steal my life. Still, I, come, I, have, I have epiphanies every single day. Every single day. And I still watch videos myself. And of course, I, a year or so ago, I decided I needed to make videos. I needed to start talking about my story and sharing my story because the one thing that is unique about my story is just the full extent, the full range of experiences and the full range of relationships and just the absolute places it took me and the amount that it took from me and the highs and the lows of the roller coaster, how far down it took me and then how far up I have managed to climb. And so that's why I felt like it was a story I needed to, to share because also I'd been very quiet. I'd been very quiet and hadn't talked about it with anybody. The way to make something out of this horrible experience and especially after losing my son was that I needed to share my story but it could help even one person. I was a case truly of denial because that is where you really don't know it. Now it's very different from lying to yourself. Lying to yourself is where you might be denying something, but you're not in denial. You know, denying and denial are not the same thing. When you're in denial, it really, you don't know it. It's like, and I was truly in denial about the abuse that was going on. And the reason for that I have, you know, since figured out was that because the truth of it is so awful. It's so awful, right? Society tells us that our families love us. Our parents are supposed to love us. And as children, our survival depends on them loving us. And so we will make up all kinds of reasons why what they're doing makes perfect sense. And this is how a trauma bond forms. And trauma bonds are very, very hard to break. It is not like love. Trauma bonds and bonds of love are not the same. Trauma bonds can stick with you well after you don't love somebody, well after you don't even like them, but you're still trauma bonded to them. And when these things start in childhood, it's very difficult to break these bonds. They were in a contest about being right, about not having their false reality messed with and all of that. We are not trying to be in a false reality. We want someone to confirm our reality, confirm that we, that we know what's going on. We are completely okay with the idea of being wrong. So when they tell us, you're wrong, I'm not wrong. In fact, we, we want that to be true because if it's not true, then what is true is that they don't love us. So. How much better is it to be wrong about whatever this thing is? So, yeah, okay, I am over-emotional. I am hard to be around. I am hard to love. Or, you are really wonderful parents, and I am this ungrateful kid, or whatever it is. Because if that's not true, then the truth is so much worse. And my mother, talking about people wanting to go to therapy so that they could blame their parents for all the things wrong with their lives, it's completely not true. We will go to bat for our abusers. We will go to bat for them for as long as we possibly can. We will be explaining away, justifying, minimizing the abuse for as long as we possibly can. And it is a crushing day when we realize, when we realize that we were abused, when we realized that these people that we love so much didn't love us, possibly, probably never loved us because they were incapable of love. It had nothing to do with us. It was just the circumstances that we came into. And that is a crushing, brutal day. And it doesn't, it's not a day. It's a process of many, many days, weeks, months, and years. And it, it's a slow process. And that's why we watch these videos and that's why channels are popping up every day and that's why they're, you know, we can't get too much of it because we need to know. Then what ends up happening is we, get, we start getting addicted to knowing, addicted to knowing the truth. Here for trauma bond is the truth and 
is if you can stay in reality as much as possible, and this is why my saying is embrace reality at all costs. And it can feel like those costs are enormous. It can feel like they're just way too big a price to pay. But if you really think about it, you're not really paying anything that wasn't already lost, that, wasn't ever, that you never really had. It was an illusion to begin with. Abuse will not stop in your life until you embrace what abuse is and embrace, embrace that you were abused and embrace that you deserved better and embrace and lovable and perfectly worthwhile and worthy and all of that and that all the things that they told you about you being broken or to this or to that or were wrong. They were just wrong and they were manipulating and they were abusing you. And there is some freedom in that. Binging on YouTube videos is because you know you're not alone. And, and there's enough people doing it now that you can find someone you're going to identify with. I was a poster child for the trauma bond and I was a poster child for not knowing, not knowing way past where it makes any sense not to know. But I didn't know. That's how you repeat abuse. If you have not come to terms with that you were involved in an abusive relationship and you have a trauma bond from an abusive past, you are definitely going to be more comfortable in those kinds of relationships until you identify it and figure out what's going on. Because you're used to this roller coaster. And, and the whole reason why it is so devastating when these relationships end, and they invariably end their relationships of inevitable harm, and the reason that they end and it feels so terrible is because it's like you're on the roller coaster and there's no, you went up and they never came down one day. Just all of a sudden, the roller coaster just disappeared. You didn't get the full cycle of relationship the way that it would normally go in a normal breakup with a normal person who also has those needs for, for closure and for, you know, they have empathy and they have, you know, a person that you build a life with, for instance. I had been this dutiful daughter. I'd been a good friend. I'd built a life with my husband. It's not normal for people to be able to, to take someone like that and just discard them one day. I was in relationships with people that did not have a conscience, that didn't see me, that didn't appreciate me, that didn't understand what, what who I was or what I was doing. It was all made up, it was all fitting a script, it was all there to meet a need that they had. And the minute that I quit meeting the need that they had, they were done with it. You know, that is not normal. But it doesn't make it any less heartbreaking to the person that's the victim of it. And especially when it happens all at once. My case was very, very traumatic because I lost everybody all at once and right after I'd almost died. Hopefully someone could take a peek at my story and kind of go, well, what I'm going through is bad, but that didn't happen to me. And, you know, at least I didn't die or that person, all that things, all that stuff happened to you and she's still here and she's still okay. And I am still here and I am still okay. You know, let, you know, hopefully that lets you know that whatever it is you're going through, you can get through it. You just got to keep going. Just one day at a time, come back to these channels. That's why we're all here 24-7. You can watch YouTube videos and go ahead and binge to your heart's content.